a healthy masculine wants to be challenged me and my partner hold each other accountable and i ask her to do that like if i asked her like the example was like i i didn't take the rubbish out and that's my role we have roles in our relationship and not to sexualize or generalize to not trigger everyone we just do we have roles that are fair and equitable okay she does some things i do some things and one of mine is to take the rubbish out and i didn't do it and she she came to me word for word and said i thought you were a man of your word and do what you say you're going to do and, <laughs> and I and my ego could have said fuck you blah 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 and come back with all the excuses but that's just my ego that's my trauma being triggered but a healthy masculine wants that Before you listen to today's episode I'd like to ask you a huge favor so many of you listen to this podcast but you're not yet subscribed potentially on any platform the more of you that subscribe and share this with your friends the more that we can bring more content to you, more knowledge and wisdom and amazing guests. And right now, this is my passion project. So I'm not making any money from it. And it does take a lot of my time amidst supporting my incredible clients inside the Lovely Radical Academy. And I get so many messages of lives that are being changed because of having access to this exciting knowledge and support and conversation and community. And by simply clicking a button to subscribe and to share, you're part of that impact, which is pretty cool. So take a moment now, hit subscribe, share this with your friends, and I hope you enjoy today's episode. He is a mindset and leadership coach going from being an anxious young boy diagnosed with Asperger's, moving from dreams of being a professional athlete, purchasing his first franchise at the age of 20, doing seven figures a year in revenue across multiple franchises by the age of 22, and then realizing he wasn't happy in the role that he had created, now moving into coaching business owners to scale their business and build fulfilling intimate relationships. He is also the host of the Lewis Huckstep Experience podcast. Lewis, welcome to the show. Kat, thank you for joining me. Uh, we took a couple of goes to get this rolling, but we're yeah. here. And uh, let's have a good chat. We got there in the end. Love technology. It's one of those things that they don't prepare you for when you decide I'm to start a business. Beautiful. So I know we have very similar missions and I believe we've both built many layers and levels of skill set and knowledge around helping people with business and relationships and health and so I'd love to hear a bit more about your story like where were you back then and what was the turning point that inspired you to self-develop and build this life you have now beautiful beautiful question um I guess I think every time you stop you tell your story you tell it a little bit differently so Hmm. uh I guess the short version of it is I was um, I I had a lot of struggles mentally and emotionally when I was younger from anxiety to uh, lack of consciousness to social anxiety to depression uh, and there was a lot of things throughout my family and upbringing that really made I guess just my mindset and emotions very painful for me from uh, suicide to abuse to isolation and it was just really challenging for me but the things we go through shape us into what we love and what our purposes and what our what our um what our dreams and desires are so it's all happened for a reason um I was going down the professional athlete route so it was very much my outlet so rugby league for anyone that understands that code so I was playing that for uh since I can remember since I think like four or five years old I was contracted uh when I was 13 so 12 years old to 18 years old uh, with the Gold Coast Titans and the Brisbane Broncos. Uh, I got a few injuries. And I just kind of lost the passion for it towards the end of it. Mm-hmm. And when I was 18, I was wanting to, I guess, get my life together as most people are like, what do you want to do when you're older? And when you're in those sort of final years of school and you're like, I don't fucking know. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I had ambitions of being a high school teacher. That was just kind of, it just came to me. I just wanted, I had some really awesome teachers that really helped me and guided me and mentored me outside of just the, the the classroom. So that really inspired me to want to do the same thing. So I decided to go down that pathway. So I was wanting the vision back then was to be a high school teacher and then a personal trainer during the holidays because make more money, help more people. I like fitness. I like training. I, I liked that type of thing. So started that. Um, and then when I started to get into the fitness industry, uh, I just, I guess, went down the pathway that led me to where I am today. And I applied for a job. 
I applied for about 10 jobs. They all said no. And then I applied for one more. And the guy said, I called him up and said, mate, I don't want any money. I just want to come work for free so I can get some experience and just get my journey started. He said, absolutely, mate, come on down. Uh, and that led me to just the last nine years of my life, which had been incredible ups and downs, lefts and rights. But it was uh, really awesome. Got me into self-development, got introduced to Tony Robbins, to D Martini, to Joe Dispenza. And for anyone that's gone down the self-development route, it's like the, it's like revealing the curtain of life. It's like, oh my God, I didn't understand any of this, like how to control your emotions, how to control your life and your destiny, how to actually understand the rules of money, how trading time for money is probably not the smartest things to do if you want some freedom. And it just, it was just like kid at a, kid, kid at a candy shop. I just went down this huge rabbit hole, went to all these events, went to these courses, joined masterminds. Uh, I was obviously doing a business uh, journey at the same time. So I opened three f physical locations uh, in three, in four years. Uh, I did it very naively though. So it wasn't, it was, it was a business built on sand to be honest. So had some issues leadership wise, system wise, and just, I guess, business skills, learned a lot from it. I sold one of them back to a partner of mine that just, we weren't seeing eye to eye. The mm -hmm. second business I sold, my partner wanted to sue the franchise I was a part of and I was kind of stuck in the middle. So that was a bit uh, challenging. So I ended up selling that back to the franchise because I just didn't want to be involved with it. And I currently have one that's under management runs without me. And I do this all day, every day now. I do what I love. I coach people. I help people work on themselves mentally, emotionally, spiritually to master their personal life while also succeeding in their professional life because they are linked. It's like people that say, don't bring your personal shit into work. If you're struggling personally, it's going to affect your work, right? So I always use you're a Buddha and a Benz. You want to be really full, whole, happy, fulfilled and loving what you do. And then commercially on, you know, your finances, you know, your investments, you know uh, what, what you need to do to hit the goals that you want to hit. But at the same time, being detached from them, and that's where being whole and at peace and loving what you're doing, healing from your shit in the past, that's uh, that's kind of what's led me to where I am today. Yeah, that's epic. And that's the thing, right? Like getting that skill set to have that foundation in yourself so that even in those challenges you faced in the past business, you now know that even if those things come in and we know if there's always going to be the next level and the next challenge and it becomes I don't know about you but for me it becomes more like play it's like oh here we go here's the next layer just like a video game just the next level you just get stronger it's like don't wish life be easier wish that you be stronger so every problem we go through is just shaping up shaping us and sculpting us into the people that we're actually ultimately meant to be so if you just view it through that lens it's uh it's like bring it on let's go what's next absolutely we hear a lot in our industry about the word purpose and specifically I need to find my purpose as if we've lost something. <laughs> I'm wondering, can you speak to me about your thoughts on this topic and what you would suggest to someone who thinks they need to find their purpose? Great question. Yeah. And, and I like the way that you alluded to that. You don't have to find anything. It's, it's inside of you. It's, yeah. I, I love the statue of David, um, a, a story that he uses is how did you make such a beautiful uh, sculpture or piece of art? He said, it was really easy. David was always there in the, in the statue. I just had to remove everything that wasn't him. And if you use that for yourself, for what your purpose is, it's not about finding it or Googling it or YouTube in it. It's, it's actually within you. It's just, becoming conscious of it and removing all of the layers of ego and trauma and beliefs that mm -hmm. aren't you. Your light shines brightest when you let it shine freely. So it's been able to remove everything that's dimming that, whether it's a limiting belief or it's a wound, which is protected by your ego. So for me, purpose is it's our gift. It's what lights us up. It's what inspires us. It's what energizes us. It's what gives us meaning. Not that life has to have meaning, but it gives us a sense of purpose, hence the name of it. So me, purpose is something that it's not something you find that's external. It's within you. It's just becoming conscious of certain things. So some questions that I would ask your listeners is what energizes you? What inspires you? What do you think about? What do you talk about? What do you spend your money on? What do you like learning about? And if you look within those, you'll find some common answers. And then the practical side of that is you go and try things. You go and taste the taste the ice cream flavors which one tastes the best and most people try one flavor and say it's their favorite flavor well you haven't tried the other 50 that are out there like go try the other ones so 
for me, it's a lot of consciousness, but it's also at the same time taking action because I find some people uh, kind of do what you were joking about at the start. It's like, oh, I'm not going to start anything until I find my purpose. It's like, no, no, no. You you find your purpose by pursuing it and doing things, trying things. Like I wanted to be a high school teacher, like I mentioned. In that uh, that period when I was starting to get into the fitness industry, I went to my school. It's funny, I finished school and I graduated. And the next year I was a teacher aide at my same school. So it's quite funny, like seeing the teachers and seeing kids that you went to school with. So, <laughs> but I went there and I wanted to be a teacher aide because I wanted to try it out. I'm like, is this really all it's meant to be? Like, mm-hmm. yes, a teacher and a teacher aide are obviously very different, but they have their commonalities. You're helping te- uh, kids learn, help them develop, et cetera. So, and it's like, I did it. Like, I didn't really enjoy it that much. It's like, it just wasn't really for me. Then I learned the rules of money and that really made me not want to go down that pathway. But yeah, so for for me, purpose is inside of you. It's becoming conscious of what it is, listening to the feedback and the signs that the universe is sending you. Mm. The biggest tip to let people understand what it is, or I've actually got two. Number one, whenever you get tears of inspiration, you are having a glimpse of your purpose somewhere. And I'll share a little story on that. So I was watching Shark Tank. Great show. I'm sure all entrepreneurs love Shark Tank. The US one is way better. And yeah. I was watching um, I was watching a US episode and there was an episode and it's this young boy. I forget his name. Anyways, it's this kid. He's like 15 years old and he, he's like selling clothes and he's killing it. He's like 15. He's doing like, I think like $2 million in revenue. He's like yeah. killing it at 15. I'm like, fucking hell, I need to be better. And he's just, anyways, he's doing the pitch and all that stuff. And then Mark Cuban, who's on the show, one of the sharks, He's just giving, he's like praising this kid, but he's giving him a lot of coaching and mentorship. He's like, look, don't be worried about this. Focus on this, do this, do this. You're doing a great job. You're amazing. You're you're incredible. Keep growing. And he was just giving them him all this coaching, mentorship and guidance. And I was getting teary watching it. And my partner looks at me, he's like, what the fuck's going on with you? We're just watching TV. He's like, I'm, I'm so inspired right now. Mm-hmm. And so when you have those moments, ask yourself what specifically is making me feel like this. And for me in that situation, it was Mark mentoring and coaching this young boy. So coaching is my purpose. Coaching is where my passions lie. So find what inspires you, where you get the goosebumps, where you get the teary eyes, when you feel amazing and find the common trend that's happening there. And within that, you'll be able to piece together what do you love? And then set a mission that allows you to hit a a big goal within that. And then you've got something to go chase and go build and go reverse engineer and the second one is your values in life come from your voids in life and your biggest value is your biggest purpose. Mm-hmm. So the question I ask my clients is what was your biggest void and pain in your upbringing? So if you had a lot of pain around for me, consciously, emotionally, mentally, having lack of guidance, lack of mental, lack of someone to help me through my dad just wasn't the dad that I needed, but he was the dad that I, I did get given, which was exactly what I needed. Mm-hmm. Uh, he wasn't there for me the way I needed back then. I was lacking a coach. I was lacking a mentor. I was lacking the tools to, of my conscious emotions and mental health. So again, if you, and if you go back to that Mark Cuban example, there's an example of the opposite of what I had. So whatever your biggest pains and voids are will give you the greatest purpose, the greater the pain, the greater the purpose. So when you can lean into that and actually heal through it, because once a trauma is healed, it gives you purpose. Once a pain is actually processed, it gives you energy to do something about it. If you haven't healed it, it just triggers you and sets you off and you stay in a bit of a cycle. But once you've healed through whatever pain you've been through, parents, relationships, abuse, abandonment, the list goes on. Once you've healed through it, it's your greatest gift. It's your greatest source of energy. Because when I think about my greatest pains from my dad, my upbringing, my social and mental and emotional pains I went through, when I think about that, I don't need fucking motivation. I don't need a coffee. I don't need someone to check in with me to make sure I'm on track. I want to fucking do something about it. And that's where the greater the pain, the greater the purpose. So those are my views on purpose as a whole. I love that. And I love how you mentioned it started off with an interest in teaching and in a way you are teaching just in the way that was meant for you specifically. And it was similar, like 10 years ago, I wanted to help people feel better through yoga and I wanted to be a mom. And 10 years later, it's like a lot of other things happened. Like, you know, you went off down the the path of 
the exercise industry and did all of that, which might not have seemed related. And I'm, yeah, I'm sure it all molded together what you do now. Yeah. And so it's like following those breadcrumbs, even if sometimes they don't make sense. Right. And I had a client recently say to me, she's like, you're like mothering all of us and our children. I was like, Oh, okay, cool. (laughs) Very, very cool. Yeah. Um, Another buzzword we hear a lot about is healing. And you touched on it a bit just then, Um, you know, whether it's healing from breakups or healing from past trauma or healing from sickness or mental illness or something someone did to you in the playground at five years old. And while I was on a healing journey for many years, I felt like I'd been convinced I was in the state where there was something that was broken or something I needed to fix. And in the end, for me, it was quite simple. The solutions wasn't easy. It was quite simple. So I'd love to hear what your experience has been with the concept of healing and the healing journey um, and what advice you'd give to someone who's currently on some form of healing journey. It's a beautiful, beautiful topic and beautiful, beautifully worded as well. I think something before I even get into the main part of it is there's nothing wrong with anyone. There's nothing to fix. There's nothing broken with anyone. You're just doing the best with what you've got. And if that's not giving you the result that you want, then you want to look at changing it. It's like, I've got, and the thing is it's for most people, it's the judgment they put on themselves, which is actually the issue. Like there's nothing wrong with who they are. There's nothing wrong with the life that you live in, but you judging yourself because there's something wrong with you is actually what gives it its power. So there's nothing wrong with who you are. Your parents and you and everyone in your life are doing the best they can with what they have. And if you're not happy with what you have, you want more, you want to grow, which most people, everyone does want to grow at some level. Then you look at changing for that reason. You do it out of inspiration, not desperation. Desperation can drive you. I do agree with that. But doing it out of that, I always ask, what's the what's the fuel behind it? Like I've got clients that used to train, or they still some of them still do because they're still healing, is they would go to the gym for two, three, four, five hours a day. And it wasn't to look great. It was because they had things they were hiding from and their traumatic reaction was to their coping mechanism was to go to the gym. Nothing wrong with going to the gym. What's mm. the fuel behind going to the gym? So for anyone that's wanting to work on themselves, there's nothing wrong with you. Just ask yourself, is your life where you want it to be mentally, emotionally, financially, spiritually, whatever, with your relationship, with your business? And for 99% of people, they'll say no, because they want to grow. That's beautiful. So then what do you want to do? What needs to be worked on for you to improve those areas of life? And then go down that journey with that intention and that mindset attached to it rather than, oh my God, I'm fucked up and there's something wrong with me and I'm not good enough. And therefore I'm going to work on myself. It's yeah the judgment is what actually keeps you stuck so with that being said healing for me there's two books i'd recommend number one is you're not broken by sarah woodhouse dr sarah woodhouse fantastic book and the second book is called the breakthrough experience by dr john d martini so i'll use the first book so you're not broken dr sarah woodhouse says three things that really stood out to me in that book one is uh well sorry four things one is trauma is unprocessed memories and now if you just actually sit with that for a bit like that actually makes sense. It's memories that you haven't actually come to terms with and Mm -hmm. haven't processed yet. So you just sit with that and I'll take you through a process using the other book. Then there's three things. There's trauma, traumatic reactions, and triggers. So trauma is the event that we go through. There's a formula she has in it. Trauma equals it's high levels of threat plus powerlessness, plus it was like ability to defend ourselves. So it's very survival instincts. It's like, if you're a baby and a dog attacks you, it's probably going to be traumatic. It's like, I'll use a better example. You're you're two, three years old and you lose mom and dad in the shopping center. That shit can be traumatic. But if that happens to a 25 year old, probably not too bad, right? Hmm. So what happens, the event itself is quite irrelevant. It's the experience for the individual that goes through it. Because two people can go through an event, the exact same event, And one person develops a a traumatic reaction, which is also known as a coping mechanism. So one person can, quote, have a trauma out of it and one person won't. And everyone's different. A trauma for someone could be social isolation. That was something for me. It could be being abused, could be being abandoned, could be being assaulted, could be taken advantage of, being lied to, be cheated on. It could be losing a loved one. Everyone's different. So uh, remember, trauma is unprocessed memories. And then you've got trauma, which is the event. The traumatic reaction is the uh coping mechanism of how we react when the trauma is set off and it's generally to protect ourselves when the trauma happens so if you get something someone calls you fat ugly and that's hurtful and then you go eat food you've just now picked up a coping mechanism of binge eating 
And then whenever you feel that pain, you're triggered, you go back to the food. And then the trigger, which is the last point, is what sets off the reaction. Mm-hmm. So you, be, you got attacked by a dog when you're younger, that's trauma. Your traumatic reaction was you get anxious because you're scared and you fight or flight. And now whenever you see a dog, you get anxious because it's, and it, that's the cycle. Mm-hmm. So if you use the second book, which is the breakthrough experience, every perception we have in life is pu- pure perceptions, are love and gratitude, and everything outside of that is lopsided. So yeah, it's hard to, he, it's hard to explain this one in a short podcast, but yeah. everything you experience in life is love and gratitude. Outside of fight or flight, where you're trying to just survive and evolve and get by, everything is love and gratitude. There's equal and opposite charges to everything you go through. Pain, growth, problems, um, intelligence or wisdom. Everything you go through has its equal and opposite balance to each other. And if you're seeing something that is wrong or bad or shouldn't have happened, and you're not seeing how it did happen and why how it served you, then there's a lopsidedness there. And therefore, it's what keeps you stuck in the trauma, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So trauma is unprocessed memories. How do we process it? We learn to see how it served us. We learn to see the benefits, the balance. If you see something is wrong, you learn to see how it's right. I'll use an example of myself and one with a client. Like I struggled a lot with uh, social anxiety a lot. So anxiousness, being anxious, anxiety, social anxiety, all, um, and all variations of that. So my social anxiety has made me very aware of helping people feel safe in an environment. I do coaching just like you. That's a fucking good skill to have. Mm-hmm. And it was gifted to me from that pain I went through. Uh, another one of the same trait, I, social anxiety was a big one for me. So I'm huge on making the environment for everyone feel welcome. I've run fucking gyms for nine years and we have a community base where people come in and feel safe to come train. That's a great trait to have. That was the benefit of the pain that I went through. And until I saw how that actually served me, made me stronger, gave me gifts, I saw it as wrong and it was a trauma. So learning to heal through it, healing in for me is processing and seeing how everything has, has it does have its purpose and has served you. So mm-hmm. asking yourself what specifically is getting you off. Dad committed suicide, someone abandoned you, someone abused you. I had a client actually, I was saying that. Mm-hmm. Uh, client, she was getting triggered a lot in her current relationship. So the trigger was giving the warning and her reaction was very um, a- a- aggressive. She'd attack and, and get aggressive. Yeah. Uh, and so the trauma, I said, okay, tell me when and where, or what specifically is getting you? That's how we heal. What specifically? Don't generalize because you're missing the growth. Mm-hmm. What specifically is setting you off? And her answer was, I feel unseen, abandoned. That was the big two. I said, okay, tell me when and where have you been in a painful experience in your life where you felt abandoned and unseen? She went back, eyes went really wide open. It was mum and dad wasn't there for her school rehearsals, weren't there for her during school. They just weren't present for her when she was younger. I said, great, tell me, how has that served you? And she couldn't answer it for a while. I said, keep looking, where has it served you? How has you have you experienced abandonment made you a better woman, a better business owner, a better parent, et cetera, et cetera. And it's made her very independent, mm-hmm. very strong, not reliant on anyone else, able to stand up for herself give her strength. And she's an independent business owner, turning over half a million bucks a year, Mm. single parent looking after two kids, goes to the gym every single day. She's very strong and independent. Where the fuck do you think that's come from? Mm. From being abandoned? What if you had the opposite? What if your parents bubble wrapped you and did everything for you? You wouldn't have the fucking strength that you have today. So it's just learning, even though this can be touchy and sensitive and hard topics for some people, it's just going in there and say, look, how has it served you? And there's certain questions I go through. There's a process I go through. What's the specific trait? Where do you do the same thing? How has it served you? Who sees the opposite trait in you? What's the downside of the opposite trait? And you just balance that perception until you can see equal upsides, equal downsides, and be grateful that it's happened. Mm -hmm. Gratitude is seen both sides for exactly what it is. Like Mm -hmm. I'm grateful to be able to do what I do, even though there's upsides to doing what I do and there's downsides to do what I do. And I'm grateful to do it. So yeah, that's my version of healing and life will present you with people and circumstances to reveal the wounds that you haven't healed through. That's why you get triggered and whatever triggers you most heals you the most because those triggers reveal the wounds that you can go process and heal through. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for sharing those stories as well because I, I share a lot about that as well. And I kind of joke that it's like 
it's the final layer before it gets really fun is the actually looking at the pain and going, how does this actually become my power? And we are in a world where out there a lot, <laughs> broad generalization, mm -hmm. it's very encouraged not to do that and to mm -hmm. point the finger and, and not to go to that depth. And it's like, you've just displayed the level of self-awareness that you have and what that's helped you create. And then how you've, yeah, you help mm -hmm. people. That is, is pretty wild. Um, I know, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to recognize it about you. But when I set out to build this for myself, which I didn't really intentionally think it would get to here, but I had no idea how much work it was going to take and not external work or physical labor, but the emotional, the programming, the beliefs, the habits. I'd love to hear about your journey and perhaps one of those great challenges or pains that turned out to be a great gift. Mm. I haven't had that question. So I'll, I'll, I'll think about, I'll try to find a, a good example of that. Uh, I guess the start of that, your, your whole life is a emote is an energetic expression of you. So if you've got shit inside of you, guess what's showing up in your life <laughs> and your business and all that stuff. So it's always inner work. It always is. And I'm actually rereading Joe Dispenza's um, Becoming Supernatural. And he's big on this stuff. He's probably, I'd say he's number one in the world for ex bridging the mystic and the science together. He's, he just, the science, he's got all, he's got all the research to back it up now. So for, for me, it's whenever I am working with a client or obviously working on myself, it's always look at yourself first. Like where, why is this showing up in your life? What's the benefits of you doing what it is that you're doing? Why? And I always look within. It's driving a car with the handbrake on. People drive a car and they, they, they put their foot on the accelerator, goals, hustle, 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 hustle. And then they've got a handbrake on of they don't think they're worthy. Yeah. They're not good enough. Success is hard. Money is evil. And they, so they're taking all this action, working, grinding, doing sales and doing what they're doing. But they've got this like, underlying issue in them mm -hmm. that's never going to allow them to grow and exceed i love the quote that you're being the best version of your limited self you're trying to grow but you've got this like glass ceiling on yourself of i'm not good enough i'm inadequate success is hard i'm not worthy whatever it may be so i guess always it always comes back to that i'm once speaking i'm trying to think of a good example for me like I can't think of necessarily one like climactic example of this. Mm. I actually, I'll share a funny story. Actually, I just, I did a video on this the other day. So this is a story. My, it does link into it, but I'll, you, 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 you'll get the point. So uh, I was in a mastermind uh, and I'd paid a lot of money to be here. Money I didn't have. I was like, I need to learn. I need to grow. I need to learn the skills. I need to figure this shit out. Yeah. It was $44,000 a year to do a fucking mastermind. I'm like, mate, I, the business is barely making that profit. How the hell are we going to do it? But me and my business partner said, we need to do this. We need to make this happen. I'm grateful that I did it. And I'm on this table and there's like 10, 15 like business owners, 20 years experience doing 10 hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm like this, I think I was 21 or 22. And I'm just like, yeah, like <laughs> fucking hell, here we go. Um, and anyways, and, I, and like you, how they do the mastermind, you write down your business, what you're doing, what your pain points are, what you want to work on and all that stuff. Mm. And you always get what you need, what not what not what you want right so i'm waiting for like okay how do you run facebook ads how do you do leads how do you do sales and literally the first question off the bat this guy who's probably about mid 40s looks at me and says what's your relationship like with your dad and i'm like oh <laughs> like, yeah here we go he's like and and i started crying like brought all this stuff up so i guess the the story for that um, I did a lot of healing. I've since mended my relationship with my dad. I train with him now. He actually trains at my studio, uh, which is cool. So um, the moral of the story is a lot of people get caught up with the tactics, the skills, the strategies. How do you run the magical funnel? Even though we we're talking about that before this call. Yeah. And they get caught up on the skills. The skills are fucking easy. Read a book, do a course, watch a YouTube video, and you can learn any skill on the planet. It's out there. But if your psychology, your self-image, your beliefs, your your lack of purpose, your lack of healing has not been done, then you're just going to self-sabotage. You're going to procrastinate. You're going to make all this money and magically make that shit disappear because you don't believe that you're worthy of money or that your self-image of your self-worth is not high enough. So for me, it always comes back to exactly what you're alluding to is always do the inner work. 
on the other side, don't use that as a bullshit excuse to not take action. You do both. You fix the plane while you fly it. You take action. You're doing the thing. You're building the business. You're giving it your best, but you're also fixing the plane, which is you. You're working on you. You're working on your beliefs. You're healing from your shit. You're learning how to regulate. You're learning the skills of how to actually market. How do you run an effective ad? How do you find your right niche? What we were talking about before. So for me, it's definitely both, but everyone says it. it's 80, 20, 80% mindset, 20% skill set. So I just find most people lean more towards the skill set because it's more shallower. It's not as deep and personal and emotional as saying, what's your relationship like with your dad? Um, and again, you get what you need, not what you want. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's just one of the examples, but I'm just trying to think of other ones that came through. Like, well, I love that you, that you put that example of driving with a handbrake on and mentioning the thing about your dad, because so much of the time we are, you know, whether we're consciously or unconsciously holding on to resentments, holding on to stories about a parent from another parent, whatever it is. And I don't know about you, but I resisted starting my coaching practice for years. Mm -hmm. I was doing other businesses because I was like, I don't want to deal with other people's problems because I know that triggers all the stuff I haven't dealt with yet. And mm -hmm. I haven't figured out how to do that. And I don't know if I can do both at the same time. Yeah. And, you know, eventually I got enough tools to be like, at least now I know how to shift my stuff quickly so that I can show up and serve. But it's such a powerful thing, I think, in any business, because as soon as I had really addressed any old resentments or pains, everything shifted, including money, which I know we're going to get to. Mm. But um, yeah, it's there's so much power in, in the shadow or the darkness or whatever we want to call it. Yeah, 100%. You brought that up. That's awesome about you, Dan. Um, and kind of segue on that one, like at the end of the day, everything seems to come back to relationships. <laughs> and I've seen you talk a lot about relationships online. And I have a big audience of people who have been through breakups and, and all that, you know, pain has built up or is sitting there or is limiting them or whatever. And so I have a couple of questions, one from a man's perspective and one for, for a woman, because I get, you know, equal parts getting angry in the comment sections, I've noticed. Um, but what would you say is the biggest opportunity for women or the feminine to support building a strong relationship with a man, the masculine? That's a good question. I haven't had that question. Um... Thoughts? <laughs> I would personally say a healthy masculine wants to be challenged. Mm. And I find, um, I shared a story with a friend of mine and he's on his healing journey too. And he's since gotten a lot better with this, but mm. I actually was presenting for his, um, his group of clients. Like he brought me in as a speaker and we're talking about relationships. And uh, I just shared like an example of like me and my partner hold each other accountable. And I ask her to do that. Like if I asked her, like the example was like, I, I didn't take the rubbish out. And that's my role. We have roles in our relationship and not to sexualize or generalize to not trigger everyone. Okay. We just do, we have roles that are fair and equitable. Okay. She does some things. I do some things. And one of mine is to take the rubbish out. And I didn't do it. And she, she came to me word for word and said, I thought you were a man of your word and do what you say you're going to do. Oh. And, and I, and my ego could have said, fuck you, blah, 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 blah. And come back with all the excuses, but that's just my ego. That's my trauma being triggered. But a healthy masculine wants that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for holding me to a high fucking level. Yeah. So I would suggest the feminine to really, well, to go the other way as well for the feminine is make sure that you are really embodying your femi feminine because I find that it's, I've, I've got interesting beliefs around the society at the moment because the whole mm -hmm. women empowerment movement is beautiful. I love it, but it can be you. the extreme of that can be like putting natural yeah. feminine women into their masculine too much because they feel like they have to because it's women empowerment like biologically we have our cause of energy and and that's not male or female you could have a masculine female and a feminine male so it's not genders this is energies mm -hmm. i don't know the percentage but 80 90 percent masculine is male feminine is female but there are obviously people that don't fit into that so whoever's got the feminine energy, really lean into it. Be your feminine, be flowy, be creative, hang out with your circle of other feminine, whether it's male or female, like really embrace that because that's what a masculine really loves. I love it when my partner is being flowy, being creative, hanging out with her girlfriends and really pampering herself. I love it when she's kicking ass and she's doing her thing and she's helping people, she's empowering people. I love that too. But a masculine really wants the feminine, a feminine really wants the masculine. 
Yeah. So one, I would say challenge them, challenge your man, challenge, or again, not man, masculine, challenge your partner to really raise the standard. A healthy masculine will be okay with it and will thank you for it. They will probably get triggered because we're all healing, right? But through that healing, you'll be able to get to a point where you can handle it. Uh, but then also make sure you prioritize your polarity with your own feminine energy, doing things that really light you up, whether it's getting the hair done, going to spending time in nature, spending time with your girlfriends, whatever it may be, just make sure you're really pampering yourself. And if you're a boss bitch and you're, you're kicking ass, taking names and building a business, do that, but don't feel like you have to because of the societal pressures that people are saying that women are powerful. Yes, they are. I believe the true power in women is their feminine creativity, the true manifestation and embodiment of the fucking true feminine for me is just a woman who's so in touch with her body and her feminine side and is so connected to the greater source, whatever your spiritual beliefs are, where she can truly fucking create and manifest everything through her intention and through her energy. That for me is true feminine fucking power, in my opinion, really? uh, not the hustle, hustle, bustle, bustle, which is nothing wrong with that either. No judgment yeah. there. We but, can build the skyscrapers too. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. By all means, do it. I don't know if we but can. Uh, but going back to the earlier point, like what's the fuel behind it? If your fuel behind it is to fuck you, man, we can do it too. Mm. Is that really serving you? Is that really what you want to do? Or are you doing it because you're trying to prove a point? And, but if that's actually in your DNA, because I've got some, um, some lady friends who are fucking hustlers. They're great entrepreneurs. They're kicking ass. And that's just who they are. And they're happy as shit. Beautiful. Mm. But I have seen people that are trying to do it out of like a, a fuck you to society and a fuck you to men. And yeah. I just don't believe that in, that energy is going to really serve you. So embody your, mem your, feminine, your feminine, embody your feminine, really, really lean into it and do what you need to do to really express that at the highest level. And mm -hmm. then also challenge your masculine, your partner to really fucking be, be the man that you say you're going to be. You want to, I thought you said you were going to get this done today. Why didn't you get this done today? I'm here to support you. But I'm just, I would like to know why you haven't and really challenge it. Cause even though I, my ego's come up many times in those conversations, it, it's very few and far between now, but even though it's challenging for me once regulated and, and calmed down, I'm fucking grateful for it. And you've built that muscle over time. I'm sure as well, like each time there's been that challenge, it's just like, oh, I have an opportunity to respond yeah. in a way. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. You, you mentioned the roles and I, we don't need to go too far into it. Cause I know it's a whole other kettle of fish but it's such a powerful thing like setting the stage in the relationship for like this is what i'm really good at this is what you're already good at like yeah. let's own our areas and then challenge each other like that i think really sets the stage for those conversations to be less absolutely <laughs> it's just a fair and equitable relationship it's yeah like i do some parts of the cleaning she does start some parts of the cleaning i cook most out of us um she she cooks as well uh, I take the rubbish out every time. That's just my role that I do. She does. She does most of the food shopping. I I barely do that. Um, I do that sometimes. We obviously, depending on life happening, we do share all of the roles. But we just have roles that fit within us. I always wipe down the benches, clean the sinks, take the rubbish out. She does the food shopping. Um, we both do a lot of the cleaning. We kind of share that role. But yeah, there's no like I'm the man, so I do this. You're the woman, so you do this. It's like, well, what are our strengths? What are our weaknesses? It's a fair and equitable relationship. We 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 also get a cleaner, so we delegate some of that stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's not like a you're a female, you do these roles. I'm a male, I do these roles. It's just yeah. a fair relationship. Have the open conversation. And like, there might be two people coming together, and I I know I learned a lot about this from Elena and Grant Cardo, and I don't know if you yeah big fan. much more, but I love them. And she talks about this in her book, um, How to Build an Empire, about knowing your role. And she yeah. does do like, and it doesn't mean that's the woman in the kitchen and the man bringing home yeah. the bacon. It could yeah. be the opposite. Like, yeah. and I do know many couples where the woman is the breadwinner and yeah. the man is actually doing everything. He's doing all of the tech behind the scenes. He's looking after the kids, but he's also like it's still masculine, it's still feminine, but it's knowing what your skills are. Like if one's good with money and one's not good with money, vice versa. Like Absolutely. They should own that area of life mm, for everyone to win. Um, just to go into something for the men, because there is a lot of men who get angry in my comments um, about, you know, women who want too much or the unhealed man, like women who are never, they never, get enough or they always want more or they're wanting money or security or looks what would you say is a great move or a great first step even for a man 
to become of high value if he's wanting a woman to be or a partner to be high value. A quote that makes me laugh because it always gets me too, but words only hurt you to the level that you believe them yourself. So Mm. if someone is saying things that's bringing up your shit, there's some healing to be done. So if a woman's saying that you're not good enough and you should be better at this, Mm. why is it bringing shit up? Is there truth to that? Do you believe that you're not good enough? Do you believe that there's you're inadequate? Do you believe that you're not good with your money? So I always look for the balance. I always look for the gratitude. Where's the balance to what's going on? So that would be my first recommendation. Uh, Second recommendation, I I believe in just getting clear on what you really want in a relationship. Mm. Like there's no right or wrong. Like you were just mentioning some awesome examples. Grant Cardone and Elena are fantastic. I, I love watching their stuff. There's no like cookie cutter way of having a relationship. My me and my, my partner in a in an open ish relationship to give you some more context, and that is like fucking five t- twenty years ago. That was like blasphemy. You couldn't do that stuff. It's becoming a lot more common these days. But I think for the the men is look for what you want in a relationship. Do you want and this. There's a pro and a con to what I'm about to say. Do you want a woman that's more, I guess, uh, placid from that sense of challenging you mm. because you don't want that in life? Is it? Are you doing that because you're scared of the confrontation and you're scared of the growth? That's the question I would ask. Because I was going, if I could use the example of what Georgia does to me, the insecure victim version of me would say, fuck you, I'm leaving you. How dare you speak to me like that? But the embodied conscious version who's still got a lot lot of work to do i'm still on my journey too but the level i'm at now is able to say you know what thank you so much thank you for the thank you for challenging me i appreciate that so if you're feeling triggered or you don't like that your partner's saying hey get your finances together hey your health is like shit go look after your health hey you're just not satisfying me sexually immensely emotionally spiritually there's truth for you to heal in grow in those areas i always look for the growth but are, are you putting a square peg in a round hole? Are you actually just not compatible for what you guys are after? Are you looking and is it the right fit for you to have your more of the breadwinner, like you're saying, and you're looking for more of the stay-at-home mum who's just going to look after the kids and keep the house in order? No judgment. I'm not saying feminine male roles here. Might be the other way around. So one, I would always look for the growth. And why is that triggering you? Is there truth in what they're saying and that's pissing you off? That's your shit. Go work on it. Uh, secondly, like what type of relationship do you want? Like there's um, Alex Mosey, Layla Mosey, if you follow them, they're, they're probably another awesome power couple to use mm. as an example. I know they use the example of a cheerleader and a quarterback. So you've got a quarterback is your partner is on the field with you and that's might be business. So you're, you're doing your business careers together. You're building a business, you're building an empire together. Elena and Grant kind of fall into that category as well. And then you've got the cheerleader where again, not man or female, but one of the partners is the breadwinner and the other partners is full supporter. Mm -hmm. And you might have that structure, no right or wrong. There's benefits to both of those, but find the type of structure that you want. What type of relationship are you looking for? What I always do vision, purpose, mission, uh, sorry, values, purpose, mission, vision. So -hmm. what's your vision and what does your relationship look like in that vision? Intimacy, connection, communication, spirituality, finances, travel, health, whatever. And does this person actually fit that? Or are you putting a square peg in a round hole and it's just not compatible? And that's Mm. where it's probably time to move on and find someone else. Amen. Since we've talked about finances a bit, let's talk about money. Money. (laughs) I know for my my whole life, but my, especially my entrepreneurial journey, realizing how many layers of limiting money beliefs and blockages I had, and then learning how to address them and challenge them and change them has been so pivotal like and so revealing and so like I know you mentioned you had this early on so I'd love to hear like what has your relationship with money been like maybe earlier on and then how what were the things that made you go holy moly there's more (laughs) beautiful question uh I I, I think similar to you came up from what I was hearing from some of your answers. I didn't grow up with money. I grew up without money. I grew up with, uh, I, I'm from Norfolk Island. You have to Google it. It's very small. Uh, it's a population of about 1500 people now these days. It's very, very small. Uh, I remember going to my friend's house just like to play or whatever. And you wouldn't flush the toilet unless you did a number two to save water because I didn't have money for water. So like, I've come from that. I remember uh, going to school some days without food and just like, no food, try to get some food off some, some mates. 
Uh, I remember State of Origin uh, for footy um, and it was State of Origin night and we had like no money to like pay for like a $2 drink there. So we'd literally like dig, through, me and my brother and my dad were digging through the couches looking for like coins to buy buy a, a can of Coke or something for the footy. Um, so I'm, I've come from nothing. I'm cool with having nothing. So I've definitely come from that. Obviously that generally comes with the beliefs to match that as well. So that's definitely been a, a growth opportunity for me. Um, so I guess the, it comes back to, I guess the, the work that we're talking about before and like really doing the inner work, cause it's going to be that self-limitation you've got on yourself. It's the best version of your limited self. Cause if you're want to make all this money, you want to start a business, you want to do X, Y, Z, but you don't believe money is valuable. You don't respect money. You believe money is evil. You believe money doesn't grow on trees and you've got all these shitty beliefs. Rich people are there. evil. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and beliefs come through stories. Like I, I, this, I believe this is from the same book. Um, You're not broken. A mm -hmm. belief is a repeated thought grounded in a lived experience. So you go, someone tells you something or you tell yourself something and then you go through something that reaffirms that belief that you came up with. So your mom or dad or ex-boyfriend or whatever says you're not good enough. And then you get cheated on and broken up with the partner that reaffirms that you're not good enough. And that becomes a belief. So I love money because it just comes up so often, even from like the, the, the cartoons we watch. I love the Simpsons is the best example is like you hear, you, you hear the word money and mom and dad are fighting. Yeah. So there's pain there argument. And you hear the word money bills, debt, you hear just the word money. So your association with money and pain get linked. And then you turn on the Simpsons who has all the money. Mr. Burns on the hill with the fucking the the, the guard dogs, the, the hounds. evil laugh and with the evil laugh with creepy the creepy long laugh. fingers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then that reaffirms even further that belief that money is evil. And this is all subconscious stuff, obviously, but yeah. it's yeah, it's shining light upon that. That's where the inner work comes in. That's where the self-image comes in. The, the beliefs come into it. And yeah, you the work does more work on you than you do on it. So as you pursue goals you're going to attract people and circumstances to reveal those parts of you that you haven't worked through, which is the beautiful part to work through it. Like by me chasing my purpose and chasing my vision and chasing the goals that I have, I'm going to attract people to trigger me. I'm going to attract a partner that calls me out on my shit and challenges me to be better. I'm going to um, go through a legal issue and brings up, like I, I went through a legal um, journey last year and I was, there was a lot of insecurities come up through that. Like I had some legal issues with my family and there was some pain around that for me growing up. So like that brought out a lot of my shit, but it gave me the ability to heal through it. And then, like we said, those problems make us stronger. They give us skills, they give us growth. So yeah, it kind of ties into a lot of stuff that we are talking about. It's look at your beliefs don't drive the car with the handbrake on. You can, it's just very fucking exhausting. So um, look under the hood of you, look at your beliefs, look at how you value things, look at your relationship with things. Just ask yourself right now, what's your relationship with money? How do you view money? What is money to you? And just look at what answers your subconscious mind comes up with and are they empowering or disempowering? And then if they're not empowering, that's great. Rewrite them. Find someone like you or someone like me that can help you rewrite those. And then you take more action. And then the next shitty belief comes up and then work on that. And you just continue that over 5, 10, 20 years. You're a fucking completely different person. Absolutely. And yeah, money was such a fun one for me. I remember someone once asked me and it pissed me off. Like, what do you, what's the best thing money's given you? And I was like, oh, like, so like I didn't like it because I was like what do you mean money's given me mm. like money is bad it's evil whatever the story I was running and now it's like the pivotal thing that I do most days I'm just like oh my god I have my friends I have my life like I actually wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for money because my parents wouldn't have been able to you know have me yeah <laughs> and it, there's so many things I think that we can be grateful for that money has given us. So I'd love to hear what is something that you're grateful to money for? Uh, I think my answer to that, it's a very Tony Robbins used quote, like money just makes you more of who you are. If you're, if you're an asshole, you're a bigger asshole. If you're a giver, you're a bigger giver. So for me, money is just resources. Um, there's, uh, there's probably, there's a book it's behind me on my, my shelf that you can see. 
Uh, it's called Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life by Dr. Wayne Dyer. And he talks a lot about detachment and detaching yourself from the neediness or the need to have goals, to have status, to have accumulation, to be good enough, to be loved. Mm-hmm. We are perfect exactly who we are. We came into this world with nothing and we will leave it with nothing as well. Mm-hmm. And we are everything that we need to feel full, to feel whole, to be perfect exactly who we are. Money is just the way we've set up this weird country or not weird country weird world that we live on of how to exchange for goods and services and how to grow wealth and like a thousand years ago or longer than that a couple thousand years ago none of that existed we just foraged off the land we just grew evolved in parts of the world where it kind of still doesn't yeah. exist yeah there are actually and I, they're um, happier than most of us <laughs> exactly right exactly <laughs> so um matt i'm i'm grateful for you being able to use money to give back. I'm grateful to give, to invest into me, to work on myself, to just give me the opportunities to express myself more on a bigger level, on a bigger scale. Like that's how I view business, to be honest. Vi- business is just a vehicle for you to share your gift with more people. So by having a, a good machine of from lead sales, marketing, uh, cash flow, all that stuff just allows you to impact more people, touch more people. And I love it's a it's an analogy that um uh Hormozy Alex uses really well. It's like you're playing a game of poker and depending you're you're at the table of life and depending on what cards you get dealt and how you play your cards, you will accumulate a certain amount of chips, which is money, which is status, which is achievements, which is cars, which is houses, which is whatever. And you accumulate, and you do well and you work hard and you play your cards well and you'll by the end of it you have A lot or a little or in between. Mm -hmm. And for 100% of people, at some point, the Grim Reaper will come tap you on the shoulder and tell you, your time's up. You can't take your chips with you. You got to push it all the way back into the middle and it just gets distributed to everyone else. And that continues over and over and over again. And if you use that kind of visual image of that's what's happening with your money, regardless of what you achieve, regardless of what you do with it, your status and your... And which is all ego, which is something I'm very passionate about, but it's everything you achieve doesn't matter. Like the, the amount of money in your bank account doesn't matter. It, it, in a thousand, another Alex Samosi one he uses, he made a status about the queen. It was like six months. Yes, so I after, saw that. Yeah. It was like five or six months after she passed away. And it was, it was something along the lines of the queen passed away five to six months ago from today. She accumulated more wealth than 99% of people. She was a ruler for 70 years. She was a, one of the first women rulers, X, Y, Z, blah, 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 all this wealth, all this power. And six months later, you probably didn't think of her recently until this post. Mm. So everything you achieve doesn't matter. Everyone's going to forget about you. You're going to fade into the history books. The purpose, in my opinion, is the purpose of humanity is to evolve, to leave the world better than where we found it. And then we all play our role within that great purpose to help people evolve. You do that with your work that you do with your clients. I do that with the work that I do with my clients. You'll do that um, with kids. If you have kids, I'll do that with my kids when I have kids. And you just repeat that for millions and millions of years. But for the small stints that we're here, the fucking car you drive or the amount of dollars you've got in your bank account, it's not going to make you, it's going to make, not going to make you better. Not going to make you any more worthy than anyone else. It will make you have a better lifestyle if that's what you're after, but it's not going to make you better than anyone else. So that's kind of my views of money. Uh, I ask everyone this because one of my biggest drivers is helping people be the leader of their life, whether they're leading one child or whether they're leading a corporation. But what does leadership mean to you? I've actually been down a little leadership rabbit hole, actually. So Mm -hmm. um, in the last couple, couple, uh, couple of months. So for me, leadership is one of the biggest conversations. It's There's so many facets of leadership. So uh, it's actually from the same book I was referring to, uh, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. It's all about Taoism and the Tao and how to live by it. And there's one of the quotes that really resonates with me is the ocean attracts all to it by staying below it all. So by staying below everyone, you attract everyone to you. And that's for me has changed my whole view on leadership. Like I used to have a facade of the leader is the charismatic, confident decision maker, control freak, making decisions, firing people on the spot. And they're like, it's all about them. It's they've got the spotlight on them all the time. Yeah. Where 
humility and actually letting other people take the spotlight and take the fame and take the successes and take all the accolades for me is a huge part of leadership. Uh, some other parts for me, leadership encompasses is a leader builds other leaders. Data doesn't build followers. A reflection of a good leader is a reflection of their leaders that they've built. Uh, a leader allows their team to heal and grow. A leader makes everyone around them better. Uh, yeah, I've got like a little sort of cheat sheet for my sort of lessons of leadership because it's actually one of my biggest pain points when my business journey at the start was my leadership skills, which was a lack of confidence, a lack of self-esteem and a lack of understanding of what a leader is because you'd see like movies like The Wolf of Wall Street and that's your version of leadership, right? So yeah, um, yeah so leadership has been a big learning curve for me. Uh, for anyone that wants to dive down leadership, go read John C. Maxwell, um, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Go read Simon Sinek. He's got heaps of books on leadership. Uh, Leaders eat last. Start with why they're all good. Mm. And read um, Jocko Willick, Leadership Tactics and Strategies and Tactics, and also Extreme Ownership. They're kind of my big influences with leadership. But yeah, leadership's a big, big, big conversation. I'm still working on my leadership. We all are. But yeah, be a better human being. Been working on your level of emotional intelligence, being able to stay neutral and regulate, being able to heal through yourself and be a better version of you. That's leadership. Mm. So yeah, it's a big conversation, but that's kind of my views on leadership. I love that. So tell me what's next. What are you excited about? What's coming? Uh, as much as we've been speaking about the inner work, um, I'm actually quite excited for more of the tactics that have been um, been putting together. So I've been doing a, uh, a course lately on how to build a sales machine for my business because I, I love what I do and I've got some fucking insane results with clients, but now it's about building a business to be able to help more people. So uh, I was saying like I finally finished one of my pieces of my funnel uh, yesterday. So I'm excited to put that together. Um, so yeah, putting yeah, a bit more tactics for me. So just putting that together, I'm actually looking at selling that third gym. So um, it's a bit of a crossroads for me. So it's a bit of an end of, end of a chapter for me. So that's nine years I've been in the fitness industry. So I'm really, really keen to wrap up that chapter and sell that business. Um, and I guess just keep working, keep working on me. I'm, I'm constantly learning, constantly working on my shit and becoming a better version of me. So become better, help more people and enjoy the ride. Yay. Amazing. What an epic conversation this has been. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your stories and your knowledge. Thank you so much. It's been great. And for those tuning in at home, you'll find all the ways to connect with Lewis and myself in the show notes and we'll catch you all next time. Thank you. If you like that episode, then make sure that you click here to check out some of the other conversations with my amazing guests and friends. And if you really liked it, you can click here to subscribe so that you get notified each time a new episode goes up. And you can click down here to share it with your friends if there's something that they might also like to know. See you next time, lovely.